I talked previously about the culture of rage and why we are being led more and more as a culture to get angry at groups instead of at individuals. And I'm reminded strongly of the old thing that uh, went around uh, social media quite a lot uh, a while back that says that if you put a hundred black ants and a hundred red ants into a jar that nothing will happen but if you shake the jar really hard the ants will start killing each other they'll start fighting the red ants will consider the black ants their enemy the black ants will consider the red ants their enemies but the real enemy of all of the ants is the one who shook the jar because until that time they were living together peacefully the real enemy is the one who shakes the jar so the same thing happens in our society we are together peacefully and then suddenly someone comes along and starts shaking the jar and then we forget that we're not enemies with those around us and we start fighting so we got to think about who is shaking our jar. Who is it that is yanking our chains and making us fight with each other? Well, we know ultimately that the answer is the enemy of all humanity. But it's also more, uh, more locally, it is our leaders who are shaking the jar and making us fight with each other. So why are they doing that? Well, let's consider what happens when you get two people who are not fighting to fight with each other. There's this old thing called let's you and him fight. Not you and me, you and him. So someone who's not involved really in the conflict gets a conflict started because for some reason they get something out of it so what is it that is causing our leaders to want us to fight with each other what are they getting out of it we have to remember the power of a common enemy a common enemy can get people who don't much like each other to band together and stick together in a fight. But what do you do if you don't really have a common enemy? Well, some of our leaders have discovered that, well, if we don't have a common enemy for our people to fight, we can just make one up. We can make up a common enemy, and it can even be someone that they don't really have a, a legitimate beef with. And that's still okay, because a lot of people won't really look very hard about who they're fighting, as long as they feel like they're fighting on the side of good, <clears throat> on the side of what's right. So, a lot of our leaders, for some reason, have decided that they want to make two common enemies and what they're going to do is they're going to play the, the part of the double agent and the reason that they want to do this is actually quite obvious once you think about it because once you get people divided they can no longer stand up against you and you're not the common enemy 
And so you have the power because you've divided them so that you can conquer them. So now a lot of our leaders are dividing us up so that they can conquer us so that we won't look to see the man behind the curtain. We see a similar thing in some of the old, uh, back when before television, a lot of times we would have like a puppet show out in the streets. And what would happen at puppet shows is that everyone would gather around and they would pay attention to the puppet show. And some enterprising and unscrupulous people discovered that, hey, if I get, if there's a puppet show going on, we can walk around behind the people while they're distracted and pick their pockets. And some of them went so far as to realize that, hey, we don't have to wait for somebody else's puppet show to go on. We can set one up ourselves so that we'll already be there when the crowd gathers and we'll be ready to pick people's pockets. This is following along with the model of the power that an illusionist uses. They put on a show with one hand so that you won't notice what the other hand is doing. They call it misdirection. So, in this example, fighting your fellow man, the people that are actually pretty much like you, and just disagree with you on a few things, is what the right hand is doing. So, if that's what the right hand is doing, what is the left hand doing that the right hand is distracting you from? That is the question that you need to be paying attention to. What is the left hand doing? Well, very frequently the left hand is over there breaking promises. It's doing things that it said it wouldn't do. It's doing things that it knows you wouldn't want it doing. This is what comes from politicians using the power of my enemy's enemy. They've got you focused on these other people that disagree with you. And yet what they're doing is they're doing things that you would disagree with even more strongly. It's the power of the enemy's enemy. And the reason that they do it is that it brings repeat customers. This works in lots of different areas. It's not just politics. You can see this in addiction. People will keep you distracted with an addiction so that you'll keep coming back to them and keep buying more of their products. It happens with borrowers. If you keep people distracted, they won't realize how much you're charging them for what they're uh, borrowing. Credit cards do this a lot. They will uh, have promotions and let you skip payments and uh, do lots of things like that so that you won't notice that they're keeping you in debt longer. The check cashing places do this. They charge a lot of interest but they don't present it as charging a lot of interest. They present it as, well, you only have to pay this much. And we're going to break it up into payments that are easy for you to manage. Rent to own places do this. Lots of different places do this. And as I mentioned before, politicians do use this. 
because voters can be repeat customers. And if you can get people to just keep voting for you because you're going to be supposedly fighting against these people who disagree, maybe they won't notice what you're doing. The whole machine is designed to make no lasting changes and to keep those same people in power year after year. The solution, of course, to, to all of this is to get new leaders. But of course, that's not going to happen while everyone's believing this lie that their leaders that are in power are fighting the good fight and saving the world from those naughty, naughty people who disagree with you. And the other big lies that they tell. As long as people believe those lies, especially the ones about voting, nothing is going to change. So is there a way out of this? Yes, there is. But first, we have to wake up and stop giving power to those who profit from inflammation rather than improvement. So what really is the solution to this problem? If it's not through getting people to vote for someone better, what is the solution? I'm going to talk about that next time. I hope you've enjoyed this and that you'll join me next time when we're going to learn about the solution to this carousel of conflict. If you haven't seen the first episode of this video series, you can check it out over at my Patreon page. Thank you.